Hello everyone, this is Ashley here at the Speedway Public Library, and today we are going to be looking at the basics of embroidery. So to start, you're going to need an embroidery hoop, some fabric, a needle that has a large enough eye for you to be able to put the embroidery thread, as well as a needle threader if you need it, and then a pair of scissors, and of course, your embroidery thread. So today I'm just gonna be teaching you five different embroidery stitches. That are, uh, they are the back stitch, the satin stitch, the daisy stitch, the French knot, and the bullion or uh, coil stitch. So to begin, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen up your embroidery hoop and take the two pieces apart. Your fabric is going to go over the middle circle and then you are going to put that larger hoop over top. Now I've already cut my fabric to a smaller length, um, but of course, if you have a bigger piece, you can then trim it once you have it in that hoop. And then you're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. And then if you need to, see that's kind of loose a little bit, you can pull that fabric to tighten it just a bit. You don't wanna tighten it too much or your threads might be too loose when you undo it. So there we go. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your embroidery floss. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one since I already have the tail here. And we're actually not gonna use the entire, um, entire amount of thread. So if we were to put this right through the needle and start embroidering with it, it's gonna end up looking really thick and chunky. So instead, we're gonna take a length off here. So I'm just gonna start with uh, about two feet's worth. And then, let's see if I can get it to focus. All right, so let's see, there we go. This is a group of six threads and we're actually going to divide it and just take three. So there we go. So to unwind this, it is going to constantly try to wind itself back up. So it's important that you kind of hold both and then unwind it with your other hand. So I'll sometimes pull it down and then straighten it. And free grab farther down and continue to loosen that up until you get all the way to the end. So now you have two strands that are those two feet long. So one of them I'm just gonna go ahead and put to the side. Maybe we'll use that one later. And the other one I'm going to thread. So if you've not used a needle threader before, all you do is you take the wire end and you stick that through the eye of the needle. And then let's see, you're going to stick your thread through the wire of the needle threader. And then you're going to pull that needle threader back through that eye. And that is going to leave the thread in the needle. So I'm going to leave this one out. We don't want to tie it off or anything. We just kind of want to leave it. And then the end, we are going to make a small knot. So to do this, we're just going to do, we're going to wrap it around our finger twice, and then we're going to roll it and pull down. And that's going to create a little knot. All right, so the first stitch we're going to do is the back stitch. This is the stitch that you probably learned in um, home ec classes. It's the one that kind of just goes back and forth as you're creating a line. And I'm actually going to create a small line for us to go ahead and follow. So usually you don't want to use a marker on your embroidery um, fabric just because it is hard to get off. 
I'm most of the time I use a pencil, but this was what I had on hand. So I'm just going to create a small line just so you can kind of see which way we're going. So for this stitch, we're going to go from the underside and go right through the fabric and pull up. Now for these, you don't want to make them too big. You want to keep them pretty short. That way you can easily you know, curve around if you need to. So I'm just going to go about what, half a centimeter and put that needle back down in and pull the thread through. And then now, instead of coming right back up next to it, I'm going to skip that half centimeter or technically going a half, meter, half centimeter on the back. I'm going to go up through I said it's oh, up through it. Like I said, it's about half a half a centimeter. Pull through, and now we're actually going to go back. So that is the back stitch uh, where it gets its name. So we're going to go backwards and put it right back through that same hole from the previous stitch. Pull it through, and now we have a solid line. So we're going to continue with that. So skip about half a centimeter. Come back up pull through, and go back down. And we're going to continue that. So back up, and down. Back up, and down. And as you see it, as you start going, it kind of you know picks up and you can do it a little bit faster. And you want them to be as, as uniform as possible, but of course they don't always end up being so and that's okay. All right, we're just about at the end of that line that I made. Uh, real quick while I'm finishing this up, I want to remind everyone that I am not a professional when it comes to this. Um, this is actually something that I just recently picked up during the quarantine and I absolutely fell in love with it. I had previously cross stitched and I liked how embroidery is a little bit more free flowing. You have a little bit more control over what you do. Um, as you can see, I am not using the, I think it's called Ada fabric which has all those holes in it um, to where you, it's kind of like a grid of holes that you can make things very uniform but I, like I said I like the more free-flowing aspect of embroidery especially on just standard fabric so that right there is the back stitch all right the next one we're gonna do is the satin stitch. The satin stitch is, from what I hear from a lot of other people, probably one of the most daunting um, of stitches. And it's because you have to keep everything very, very close together. Um, a good example of this before we start, it's a piece I'm currently working on. So this right here is the satin stitch. So you have to try to keep it very uniform, very close together. That way you don't get gaps in that. So for a satin stitch, um, usually you would have something already made. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a small square. Oops, sorry, small square. All right. And then usually you want to keep your back really nice. Um, so you want it just start all the way over here. Um, you'd either tie off and start a new piece of um, embroidery thread over here or what I'm going to um, or what I would usually do is just thread um, just kind of weave weave my thread back under here to bring it over. Um, because I'm just making an example I'm just going to go ahead and go over here. So for the satin stitch I'm going to bring it up and you're just going to go ahead and follow those lines. But like I said, when you go to make that next one, you're gonna want it to be very, very close to that other one. 
So I said very, very close. You can kind of see how close that is. And then bring it right back down very, very close. So then back up. And down. And so you can see, just keep them very, very close together. And do just a couple more of these real quick. Oops, sorry, I keep moving it away from the camera. So the satin stitch is very useful when it comes to filling uh, different spaces just because it does cover a wide area and you can usually make it pretty standard. Let's see, do just a couple more. And if you notice that you do have a spot where you need to go back over, for example, you can see I have a little bit of fabric showing through right there. It's just as easy as going right back up in that spot that you are missing. And then I'll usually just take my needle and kind of follow that path down. And there we go. And now it's filled. And that is the satin stitch. All right, the next one we are going to do is the daisy stitch. Now, the fun thing about the daisy stitch is that this is um, what you can use to make flowers, um, chains of leaves, um, that kind of thing. So the daisy stitch, you're going to come up in your fabric, and then we're going to be making a loop. So I'll usually wrap it around my thumb, and then you're gonna put that needle right back down where you pulled it up. And then see how we still have it around our thumb because we don't want to let this go. Then however long you want this to be, that's where you're going to bring your needle up again. And then pull that through and it will loop around that thread. And then you're going to take your needle and put it right back down again where you just came up through. And that creates this kind of petal teardrop, long teardrop type shape. So if you were to come up in the middle again, do another loop and back down. And then let's do, we'll do a shorter one. Loop. A loop. And then again, back down through that same hole. So like I said, this is called a daisy stitch. Um, really popular for like chains of flowers. Like if you were to do this kind of chain, it makes it a little easy to do that. Let's see. Through. Oh, and I lost my needle. One second. So I lost the needle just because I'm getting towards the end of my thread. So if that happens, you can always tie off and start a new, new piece of thread. All right, so I accidentally pulled it through because of that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change to a longer piece of thread real quick. Needle threader. And down. And pull through the needle. There we go. All right. I'm gonna tie the end off again. All righty. Okay, so for example, for this daisy stitch here, Do, do just a simple stitch like that. All right, and then up. Loop it. 
back down, and then we want to come up through the top of that leaf and back down through the top of that leaf. And then we can continue on to the next one. I'm just going to do a simple stitch here. And then base of the leaf. Do a loop. And down. Top of the leaf. And back down through the top of the leaf. So you can see how it would start to create that, that shape. So that is the daisy stitch. And the next two we're going to do involves wrapping that yarn. So the first one is called a French knot. And this one involves wrapping it three times. So French knot. So for the French knot, what we're going to do is we are going to bring our needle up. Pull it through. And then we're going to take our needle and go kind of right to the base here. And we're going to wrap it three times around. Three times. And then pull tight and we're going to put that needle right back down and pull it through. And it gives us this cute little circular knot. So once again, you go up and then towards the base, wrap it three times around your needle. Hold it tight while you put it back down and pull through. And that is the French knot. All right, and the last one we are going to do is called the bullion or the coil stitch. And this one is a lot different, um, but it's a lot of fun too. So with this one, you actually need to already have your needle up through the top. And then you are going to um, look at kind of the space between where you're going to put it. So I'm just going to put it down. I'm going to put it down kind of where I am, um, not in the same hole because you don't want to undo your thread. And then pop it up. And we're going to look at that space. What we're going to do now is we're going to be wrapping our thread around the top of the needle. So we can push it a little bit farther out. And just enough to fill that space. So let's see if I can find, find my needle or find my thread. All right, so I'm going to take the end of my thread here. So make sure you're not grabbing the, the tail. Make sure you're grabbing the actual thread. And you're going to just start wrapping that around your needle. You kind of push it down, push it down. Probably should have made a smaller area. <laughs> so a little bit more. I'm gonna push my needle through just a hair more so I can have a little bit more space. All right. Now the tricky part is that we're gonna to have to push that needle through while pulling that coil down. So pushing it through and I'm pushing, pushing the needle on the other side, pushing that with my other finger. I'm just kind of wiggling it. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and then once we have it, we're going to pull the rest of the yarn, or the um, embroidery floss through. And then, so you see it here? Then we're gonna put it right back down through that first hole. And that creates this solid looking coiled uh, piece of thread. So this is another one that you can use for making things like that by wrapping it around. Um, I forgot to show with the daisy stitch, you can also make these kind of flowers. So in this piece that I'm currently working on, which I'm missing of course the ears and the green leaves, 
and I need to add a little detail to the horn. Um, I have the daisy stitch on the purple flower here, French knots in the middles, in the middle of this one and this one, uh, the bullion or coil stitch, and then the back stitch here, um, and then satin stitch here. So those are the ones that I used. Like I said, I'm not finished with this piece. I still have a couple couple areas more to finish, um, but it's gonna be a, a unicorn. And as you can see, the back's not you know, entirely pretty, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be. But there you have it. There are five basic stitches for embroidery. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop a comment here on our Facebook page um, or the, a YouTube video. Um, feel free to send us a message on our uh, website or send us a uh, message on Facebook. Thanks and have a great day.